one of the steps buttons I press to find the mean and standard deviation. I have my list in there now what? Alex? Okay. Either I'm old or the masks made it hard for me here, but say that again. What do I press? Stat. Then what? Calc. Calc. Enter, because I'm on the one bar stat. I think, yeah, I had it in list one, so calculate. So we get an average at 80.05, the one at the top. And then do we use SX or Sigma X? SX. So just on your paper, let's make a note of that. Average 80.05. And let's go to three decimals on our standard deviation. So that'd be 8.642 when I round. So Z scores, like I said, they're, we're going to use them pretty much every chapter from here on out, um, except for chapter 11. That's pi squared. We don't, well, actually, we do have Z scores. It's just a different curve. And then chapter four. Chapter four has no math. It's my least favorite chapter. But so this is not something you want to just learn for this test and then forget. It's not one of those things. Um, Z-scores help us describe the location of a data point in a distribution by telling us how many standard deviations above or below the mean that data point is. The formula for finding a Z-score is Z equals X minus mean divided by standard deviation. X is just your observation. So whatever the actual piece of data that you're finding the z-score for. Um, you might also see it like this on the AP formula sheet. X is the data point you're finding the z-score for. X bar is your average. S sub X is your standard deviation. So we're going to find the z-scores for the score at 88 and 72. Since, of course, my pen wants to die on me. Since I'm doing two of them, I'm going to use subscripts to help me. So Z of 88, my Z score for 88. I'm going to take 88, my observation, minus the mean, which is 80.05. And then I'm dividing by 8.642. So I get approximately 0.92 when I round. So like it said up in that paragraph, it tells us how many standard deviations above or below the mean we are. So a score of 88 is 0.92 standard deviations above the mean. It's not a full standard deviation above the mean, because that would be, what, 80.05 plus that would be like 88.692. So we're not quite a full standard deviation above the mean, but we're pretty close, so 0.92 standard deviations above it. You also need to be able to explain what a z-score means, which is what we're going to do here, also known as interpreting. So a score of 88 is 0.92. I'm going to abbreviate standard deviations as SD. Above the mean. Then we're going to find a z-score 
4 a score of 72. So again, I'm going to use the subscript. So this time we have 72 minus 80.05. We're going to divide by 8.642. And this time I get negative 0.931. So when I have a positive z-score, that means I'm above the mean. Here, when I get a negative z-score, it's going to mean I'm below the mean, which makes sense. 72 is below our mean. 88 was above. Now, when I put it into sentence form, I don't need to put the negative and say below. I'm just going to say it's 0.932 below excuse me, 0.931 below the mean. The below implies that it's a negative z-score. Oops, I forgot SD for standard deviation, so I apologize. This process is called standardizing. So we're making everything have Standard scores, z scores. Zach. We get a markdown if you just say the score of 72 is 0.931 below the mean. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not a huge amount, but yeah. We need to have standard de deviation in the pilot. Could you use the alpha of symbols if you Um, No. You don't have to. Um, because I, I'm going with what I think I don't know for sure, okay? But what it's doing is it's standardizing the distribution, which we'll talk more about next week. It's called the standard normal distribution. We can't use S, that means standard deviation, so I think they chose Z for standardized, like the Z in there. But I don't know for sure. Any other questions? All right, down below, you guys are going to try these ones. So here it says in 2012, the mean number of wins for teams in the major league in the MLB was 81. Standard deviation of 11.9. I want you to find and interpret the z-scores for the Yankees who had 95 wins and the Mets who had 74 wins. So find the z-score, write a sentence that explains what it's telling you.
Most of you 
I got the Z score correct. You got the 1.176. But a lot of you just took my wording from up there and replace the numbers, which in theory is a good idea, except for up here we were talking about test scores and down here we're talking about the number of wins. So all of you that wrote a score of 95, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about 95 wins. Hannah is going to come put B up for us with her way of interpreting. Yes, sir. Why would it be 1.76 and not just 1.18? Uh, either one's fine. I said three decimals. Um, on this one, when I rounded, it would have rounded to point not point nine two zero, which is why I only put two decimals. So that might have been my right for you. All right, Hannah is going to do this one for us. Thanks, Hannah. So again, same thing on this one. Most of you got the Z-score, no problem. Your interpretation is where you had issues. You had that whole a score of 74. So notice that Michelle and Hannah both interpret it differently, but it's both correct. Okay, so she mentioned a total of 95 wins. Hannah said a team with 74 wins. As long as somewhere in there you're getting the correct units of what we're talking about, you're fine. The other thing, this one was negative, so it was below the mean, although I don't think I saw anybody who mixed that one up. Questions? Now we get to use some algebra skills. We don't do much algebra in this class, but we get to do some algebra skills right now. All right, <clears throat> so still working with the MLB. Um, the Chicago Cubs were 0.672 standard deviations above the mean in 2012. How many games did they win? And then I just put a reminder so you don't have to flip back and forth. Uh, the mean is 81, standard deviation of 11.9. So we're still going to use that z-score formula, but this time we know the z-score and our observation or the x is the unknown. So we're going to work with this formula. Um, we know our z-score, that's up here. So 0.672, we don't know x, the number of wins they have. We know the average is 81, and we know standard deviation is 11.9. How do I solve for x? Zach? Multiply both sides by 11.9 to get rid of the division. So those are going to cancel out. 11.9 times 0.672 gives us 7.9968, and that's equal to x minus 81. What's the last step? How did we get x by itself? Add 81. So we would get what, 
2009. So how many games did the Chicago Cubs win in 2012? Is it 88 or is it 89? It's a really good thought, but it is 89 in this one. If we round down and then we plug 88 in, we're going to get a z-score less than that. So in this case, a lot of times with like other math classes, we just truncate, but statistics doesn't follow the rules of a lot of math classes. So you guys are going to figure out how many games the Toronto Blue Jays won in 2012. I do want to emphasize that they were below the mean. So that's going to change your z-score to a negative to make sure that you make it a negative z-score. Like I said, biggest thing on this one is we're below the mean, which means that the z-score was negative to begin with. So you end up with 54.9985 for x. So we round up and the Blue Jays won 55 games in 2012. Okay. Below and above are keywords right now with z-scores. Positive z-score is above negative z-score below. 
Any questions before I move it up? Right. So you guys, I'm going to read through it, but you guys are going to do these three on your own. So it says, Mrs. Navard's statistics classes height distribution is shown in the dot plot at the right, along with a summary statistic. Oh, we got the dot plot of their heights. Then below is the computer output that gives the summary statistics. So the number of kids in class, mean, standard deviation, then your five number summary. You guys are going to answer A, B, and C. Did somebody leave their pencil up here? Because this is not on. All right, well, now it is on.
I have quite a few of you that just said Lynette is. Okay, yes, it is Lynette, but what are we measuring about Lynette? The height. So make sure you include the units for whatever we're measuring, not just the name of people. Include the units of what we're measuring. Zach? Does it work if you just say the height? The height of 65 I just, I did go around, I saw a lot of Lynette is, and down here, Brent is. And we need to make sure we have our units. On B, there are two ways that you can do this. Maddie is going to come show us one way to, to her frustration and anger. And she's going to do it anyways. Rolled her eyes at me. She's got this. I feel like we're in a scary context and I That is absolutely fine. Ethan did ask me, he goes, this is worded different. Are you asking for the same thing? A z-score is inappropriate numerical evidence for comparing Brent to the rest of his class. Amelia has another way that is just as correct. So she's going to come show that. You guys 
guys should all be looking at Amelia because she's the only one that had this on her paper. Ethan eventually got there. But the rest of you didn't have this, so make sure you're paying attention. I'm just always, it's always interesting. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, y